Hello, dear friend. This is this is Yule Humphreys with Bible Reflections, about a five or ten minute message. I pray will bless your heart and will help you find a way that will make you stronger to live for God than do the thing you should today. The Bible teaches us great truths. And one of the truths it teaches us is that we ought to please God. We ought to try to please God. Just that simple. One of the greatest things you can do is to try to please God. And I'm talking to many of you who feel that you want to please Him. And this is a thing to do. Please God and you'll find you'll make uh, uh, your life pleasing. Uh, please God. Please God. And your life will be pleasing. But we learn to do that. Over in the book of John in the 8th chapter, Jesus said, He that has sent me is with me. He has not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. And may the Lord bless this message to your heart. Jesus said, He that sent me, the Father that sent me, is always with me. I'm never alone. Because I always do those things that please him. And so we need to seek to please him. Many people, they go out every day knowing that they're going to have to make decisions and do things throughout the day, and most of those decisions will be made according to that which pleases themselves or pleasing others. But that's really not God's way. God's way is for us to go out with the idea of, number one, trying to please God. So whatever decision we make... <coughs> It would be good if we could think just a moment and say, does this please God? Is this what He wants? Does this his, is this His desire? You see, seek to please God in everything you do and God will bless. Sarah Young has said in her book, Jesus Calling, that the greatest way to have a pleasing life is to learn to please God. And I think that's true. And I pray God will help us all to please Him more. I know I know that I need to grow in this grace also. Trying to please God instead of doing that which pleases me. And we find it in the Word of God and we can do it. We can do it because God teaches us over in the 37th Psalm. In, uh, and we find this word in verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of the heart. And here's one way we can learn to please God is try to delight yourself in the Lord. Try to be grateful for, for the Lord. Thank the Lord God that He's your God. Thank Him that He loves you. He's a great God, a loving, forgiving God, a righteous and a holy God. We need to fear Him, but we need to love Him and serve Him and try to please Him. He's God that gives you breath. He's God that gives you life. He is where you are if you trust Him. And you're where you are by the grace of God. You're who you are by the grace of God. And so learn to co co commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him. And He will bring it to pass. So commit your life to Him as best you can. And trust in Him. And He will bring it to pass. Over in the Hebrews in the 11th chapter. It says, By faith Enoch was translated that he did not see death. And he was not found. Enoch walked with God and he was translated. He didn't die. He was just translated and took to heaven. And he had a new body and a new new life altogether. Eternal body and eternal life was given. And he, he, and he went to heaven without dying. And uh, so it was because God had translated him. But before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. He pleased God. That's all he said about about Enoch but it said enough Enoch pleased God and God took him and so we need to learn to please the Lord God to try to please him because that's very important when we please the Lord we're pleasing one that, that is very important let me give you this illustration here's a, here's a man that is, uh, owns a company and he puts out a, a bulletin board a promotion is in the offering for those who would like to apply for that promotion, please call him. Here's a man that comes to him and he said, Mr. Boss, I'd like to get that promotion. I've been working for you for some time. I, I've been doing a pretty poor job. I just, you know, can't hardly get with it. But I've been doing partially a pretty good job. But he said, if I get that promotion, I would certainly do a great job. 
But here's another man that comes, and he says to him, Mr. Boss, I want you to know that I have appreciated the job that you've given me, and I've tried to do the best I can with it, and I appreciate it. But, on the other hand, if I can help you and help this company more by, by working in this promotion, then I would like to apply for it. Who do you think he'd hire? He'd hire the second man, the man who said, I've already done what I can, and I'm happy where I am, but if I can please you more and do more for you and your company, then let me do it. And so it is with God. We need to say, Lord God, I'm happy where I am. Praise God. But if, on the other hand, if you've got a promotion for me, I'm ready to take it if it will please you, and if it will help your cause, and if it will build your church, if it will help people, if it will lift up others, if it will magnify Jesus Christ, I'll do it. And he'll bless your life. And so learn, learn to say with the Lord Jesus, He that saved me and has sent me, is with me. He never leaves me alone because I always do those things that please Him, that please Him. God bless you, dear friend, and trust in Jesus. Put your love and your heart and your trust in Christ. Ask Him to save you, forgive you, and come into your heart as the Lord of your life. And you will be a Christian that will be pleasing Him. Amen.